Hello and welcome to the last bonus episode of Eldritch Girl for 2021. Um, looking forward to seeing everyone again in the new year, but of course we're skipping this week for the main event and coming back on the 30th of December for part 12. Um, this bonus episode is the December letter that I'm sending out to Kofi supporters. Um, I'm decide I've decided to just like tell everyone what the contents of the letters are to see if you want to sign up to my tiers. Um, so that's ko-fi.com forward slash CM Rosens. Um, and the point of these letters are that they are monthly letters you get um, if you support me monthly. So if you support at the £3 per month tier, which is the Eldritch, Eldritch Seekers tier, um, that means you get these letters as Kofi posts. Um, so the like a digital version of them. Um, and then if you sign up for the Eldritch Family tier, which is £5 a month and includes postage and packaging and is open internationally, then you get them handwritten. Currently, that tier is closed because I, I can't send anything else out um, now for the Christmas post. But um, I'm hoping to reopen that for three extra slots in January. But we'll see how it goes because I've already got uh, seven letters to handwrite and that's actually quite a lot <laughs> um so there will be months where there are not letters there'll be other stuff like postcards and um yeah like artwork and stickers and that sort of thing that gets sent out instead so um this one is the one that people got um personalized uh in a christmas card for um this month um, so they are non-canonical explorations of life in the current time in the current time frame. So in 2021, 2022, um, following the main characters of the Crows, which is set in 2018, and 13th, which is set in uh, January 2019. Um, and without hopefully spoiling the day we ate Grandad, which is um, the next novel in the series that is forthcoming at this time, um, but is also set in 2019, sort of the summer of 2019. Um, so these letters are from Carrie, um, and I mean, some postcards previously have been from Wes and other things, but they're in character and it's just an exploration really of, um, what life is like for them kind of three, you know, two, three years on from the novel event, the, the events of the novels. Um, and I'm going to be investigating uh, character arcs and relationship dynamics in the letters but I'm also going to do some world building in them um, like this one which explains how the family uh, how Ricky's family uh, celebrate Yule um, and this one I had to uh, practice Ricky's handwriting um, so I have little samples of it on Twitters and um, I think some on Instagram um, but basically he's, you know, he writes like a 14 year old girl. Um, he, <laughs> he doesn't write very well. Um, and he's, he's learned how to write by copying different fonts that he quite likes and he doesn't have a good grasp of cursive. So it's all printed and a lot of the letters look like runes or, um, are, you know, there's lots of straight lines going on in them apart from ones that he, he's you know like his a's are a little bit odd and his g's are a little bit odd um because he quite likes fancy letters but he can't quite manage to to, to do them because he's copying printed fonts not handwriting fonts um so he it was actually quite difficult to write those three lines at all because my hand cramped halfway through like line three um which is why <laughs> I decided like he really wouldn't have written very much. So Carrie then takes over and explains the rest of the letter. Um, the letter does have a postcode for Fairwood House. Uh, if you do get one, please don't reply to that postcode because it's a defunct postcode, which means that um, it's one that's no longer in use by the uh, by the British Postal Service. But it did at one time exist. Um so the address, obviously, is Fairwood House, Redditch Lane, Pagamon C, Sussex, East Sussex, I should say, not not West, not Pagham West Sussex, which is the real place. Uh, BN 245AZ. Um, and Ricky has written the three lines and um, he writes uh, 
for the Eldritch family members. He writes their name and then it's Yule follows slaughter month. Days, feast days, hyphen, butchery. Bonfire, underlined, sacrifice, underlined. And that's your lot. That's all he says. Um, And then Carrie has to kind of take over from that. So (laughs) Carrie's written, Hi! (laughs) I kind of hoped he'd write something a bit more, but he just wrote those three lines and then put the pen down like he'd done something he thought really hard about and walked off. So I didn't want to push it. So, okay, so you asked what your was and um, what happened last year. Um, This is, you know... And what happened last year was this. One, so it's over 12 days that includes the winter solstice, Christmas and New Year's Eve. So from 20th to the 31st of December inclusive. There's this weird build up to the 12 days where they do weekly rituals on a Monday, moon day, obviously, for the three Mondays before Yule. So three for the three Pendle sisters, I think. And it involved the butchery of random things, mainly hares and rabbits. Ricky read the entrails of one of them and then left the bits raw in the middle of the table in a particular arrangement. The other two, because there's always three, were roasted and eaten, but not by Wes, of course. He made do with vegan nut roast and pasta bake. The bones of the two roasted eaten rabbits are boiled and Ricky read the cracks in the bones after the meal. So the idea is that he isn't supposed to participate in the feasting because he was an ascetic for so long. But since he doesn't need to be one anymore, he did join in. Two, all the decor and games, etc. are 19th, 20th century, so Victorian Edwardian. I'm keeping my traditions with my parents and so on, and we're compromising on the decorations. We currently have a metric ton of holly, and Wes has ordered me a massive tree for the reception hall, and I spotted mistletoe earlier, which makes me highly suspicious. I will be avoiding Wes around that, I think. We've all got the, uh, We've got all the candles out, but waiting for Katie to come back from uni to actually decorate. Um, So in a previous letter, we were told that Katie um, has got into uni and she's at the University of Basingstoke. Big round of applause. Um, But she's back soon for this for the Christmas holidays. Three, the whole thing is some weird mashup of pagan and pseudo Christian Church of England stuff that was made up by Beverly and her sisters to get the family to bond. The rituals use C of E liturgy in the Book of Common Prayer, adapted to centre the sisters as the original heads of the family and whatever granddad is. When Ricky was born, which is 1990, and Beverly realised how useful a soothsayer was, the rituals were adapted to centre him with the three Monday bone entrail readings and a big bonfire on the wheeled on New Year's Day where he makes the final sacrifice and reads the big picture future for the whole family for the year ahead. Four. There's a big feast that Ricky wasn't supposed to join in with, but obviously he can now. Decoration starts Solstice Eve, which is 20th of December, and Solstice itself is a kind of ritualised feast with some liturgy that starts at sunset. That was when Beverly slash her sisters made their tea and gave favoured family and friends little boosts of whatever. Pretty sure the centrepiece of that feast was whoever had pissed them off, which could have been a human or could have been a family member. The next big thing is Christmas on the 25th, which mirrors the festival in a more secular way, but with goose and ghost stories. So much more Dickensian to me than a modern Christmas. I really like it. It reminds me of the old days here when the Sauvants had their parties. Then finally, it culminates in the New Year's Eve bonfire and Ricky's big oracle, but also the big final ritual of burying the old year and birthing the new, which involves passing a cow's womb through a portal to the outside burying it empty and pulling it back out full of something. That something gets birthed in our world as the portal is closed and the family hunt whatever comes out, tear it apart and eat it slash use the parts for other things. Can I just say I really fucking hate them and I'm glad most of them got eaten. And that's Yule. There's gingerbread, candied peel, mince pies, all the usual things. Ricky fully relaxed last year over lockdown when he didn't have to do the whole big performance piece for everybody. Katie made him play some games and Wes refused to play cards with him because he said ours farsight gives him an unfair advantage. Honestly, it was mostly constant bickering, but it was also weirdly nice. Because of the lockdown rules, I didn't get to see my dad and stepmom, but this year they're coming down for Christmas Eve through to Boxing Day. And I really need everyone to be on their best behaviour and just pray that they don't notice I'm a living statue. Ricky has some cream that improves my texture, so we'll hope for the best. 
I'm cautiously optimistic that it will all go okay. Ricky has gradually been getting better about this time of year. He's usually, ever since I've known him, although my ruined memories are still a bit fractured, like sifting shattered glass, really low and tired for it. He hates his birthday, so he tends to sink into a bit of a pit from September and goes into Yule to be trotted out like a performing dog, so by the end of it he's exhausted. He started getting wasted when he was 15-ish onwards, then panicked when he sobered up and realised his farsight was gone and spent the whole spring-slash-summer clawing it back as, natu as it naturally waned. Then the autumn would come along, we'd start all over again. He even did this some years as an ascetic in his early mid-twenties. I think there were three years in his early to mid-twenties. I think there were three years non-consecutive where that happened. He would have done it the year he met me, as Carrie, because she'd, I'd bought Fairwood that year and obviously he didn't like that. But thankfully, question mark, question mark, the planets aligned or the moon was right and whatever, and he decided to read his own feature instead. And you know the rest. The rest, of course, being uh, the novel The Crows. That year, 2018, was the, U was the Yule thing started to get a bit better, but only because he could throw his weight around. He did this with his whole family as the family god, and made them all pay tribute to him with eyes, their own, and hearts, other people's. He enjoyed that way too much. Then, of course, everything properly kicked off with Katie in January, and so, by 2019 Yule, there wasn't much family left to do it with. They sort of got together with a few people, like Layla, I think, but Wes opted out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. 2019 was a massive mess. Then 2020 rolled around, and we were in lockdown over the summer, and then again over Yule, so last year was nothing dramatic. This year might be the same. He's looking cheerful already, and Katie gets home from uni soon. I'm a bit worried about that, to be honest. She did say last time she called that a friend on her course has invited her to spend part of the holidays with them. I suggested she go in January after Yule, because I genuinely think Ricky would be pretty hurt if she didn't come home for their solstice stuff. I think she's keen to make new memories in her own traditions and move away from certain things, and I get that. But it's hard for Ricky to understand that at the moment, or ever. I'm just clocking it as a potential flashpoint, you know? Not sure how to approach it with either of them yet. I don't want Katie to feel bad for trying to live her own life and heal the way she needs to. And I don't know how to explain to Ricky that his way of dealing with things might not be compatible with her way without him getting into another depression spiral or something. Answers on a postcard, I guess. Oh, I did say no to lunch with Wes in the end, by the way. He looked disappointed. I said last time there were a few moments over lockdown where I felt there was something on his side, but nothing happened. I definitely didn't give any indication that was welcome. But ever since then, and I think particularly after the investment in me, um, over lockdown 2020, Wes uh, invested in a home cinema and a conservatory for, for Fairwood House. Um, he started pushing a bit. He's acting like he can get around me, testing boundaries. Although when I say no, he backs off. I'm pretty sure he wants me to be his house. And that's not going to happen. Anyway, hope you're well. Happy your Christmas holidays. Love, Carrie. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's one of the letters. That's the Christmas letter. And I hope that that's fun. And um, it's just a little short one. But yeah, so they're um, different variations on that. I do... Um, some personalised ones and I tend to write them as a stream of consciousness with all of the main points um, and then they get put up as a Kofi post so that everybody gets like all of the main points just in case I've accidentally forgot one in somebody's letter um, <laughs> um, but they're very much fun to write and I'm hoping to expand on you know what happens when Katie goes to uni and um, you know what happens with lockdowns and how that they the characters kind of interact with that and how they're forced into proximity and how that's affected their relationships with each other um and I want to explore a lot of stuff that I'm not going to get to do in the, the novels as they are at the moment um and I might kind of develop some things into short fiction and I might develop uh you know future novels from the letters I don't know um but it's just a fun non-canonical which I'm stressing um, way of you know exploring things like that so just because things happen this way in the letters that doesn't mean that's how 
that's how the books are going to set things up for them to happen. You know, it's very much like, um, I don't know, an AU, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, let's see. It's, it's quite fun. Um, and I'm enjoying it as an experiment and it's quite fun to handwrite and post things. Um, and fortunately I have enough people on the tiers that I can actually afford to post to places like the U S. Um, so, you know, that's, that's worth it for me. So that's, that's fine. I just won't be able to post like big chunky things, just, um, cards and letters are fine, but yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so happy holidays. And I really hope that, um, you're enjoying the cereal so far. Um, we'll be back on the 30th. So there's no, um, there's no main story on Thursday this week because that's the day before Boxing Day and I'm also quite busy um but yeah we're resuming on the 30th and then we're cracking back on in January um our January author interview is with Mason Hawthorne um who's done some talks for Romancing the Gothic before um and done some author interviews with that project as well um and he's published in um Unspeakable uh, by Nix Publishing um, and he's got a lot of um, he's got some other short fiction elsewhere as well but it's the um, unspeakable short story Lead Bitter House that he's going to be reading for us in January so that's exciting um, yeah and I, I'm really excited I've got um, lots of other things lined up as well um, there's also Ali Wilkes coming on the show who's uh, debut novel all the white spaces is coming out with titans that's polar arctic horror i'm um, really excited to chat to ali about that um yeah it's gonna be fun it's gonna be lots of fun um and if you want to catch up with any of the author interviews so far um we've had lyndall clipstone whose uh ya lake sedge um came out um this year um and Forest Fall, the, the second novel of the duology, is coming out, I think, 2022, 2023. Um, we've had uh, Megan Cubed, um, S.T. Gibson, uh, who's uh, obviously the author of A Diary of Blood. Um, Elbi Shmera, who's the author of My Lord. Ali Pino, who is um, publishing a gothic cookbook with Ella Buchan. Um, so that one was a little bit different because that's our first sort of non-fiction um, author we've had on. Um, Stephanie Simpson, Romance uh, and Cosmic Horror, Maria de Blasi, um, Johannes T. Evans for Queer Monster Hour. Really hoping Johannes can come back at some point, um, but we'll see. Um, and April Jane Rowan, Ezra Arndt um, under their original pen name of Nita Pan. Um, and I'm hoping that we will have uh, some people uh, returning to the show. We might, we might not, um, but hopefully we'll have some new faces as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to having some of the anthology authors on as well uh, for the anthology, um, for the Spooky by Association anthology, which is currently titled The Uncanny and the Dead. And that's coming out in January 2022. So there's lots to look forward to. Um, I'm in that anthology as well um, and my novella is well it's a very long short story slash a very short novella um, is called The Reluctant Husband and that is the genesis of the Porter clan but it's also a very much a standalone Lovecraftian parody so there's all of that to look forward to in the new year uh, we will see you again on the 30th of December for part 12 because um, the way that part 12 ends, I didn't want to have that hanging over Christmas. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hope that you'll enjoy that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you just can't wait, feel free to buy the book. Um, there's a Smashwords end of year sale on at the moment. If you want to grab the ebook, it's 50 percent off. Um, and there's you can uh, there's two of my short stories for free on there as well at the moment. And if you go to cmrosens.card, C-A-R-R-D dot co, you'll find the direct link to my sale 
right there. So you can just uh, grab yourself a copy of whatever you like. Um, they're also available on Amazon and um, lots of other ebook stores, and you can still buy them from my Kofi shop directly. So, yeah, have a great time um, over the holidays, guys, whatever holiday you're celebrating. Um, I am going to go off and celebrate Christmas and I will see you all next time. Bye now.